call to order the uh, Land Use Committee meeting of Monday, March 28th. We have, do we take roll call at committees? No, we don't. No. We have three members present. I would like a motion to approve minutes from Monday, February 28th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. We're going to do a couple of reports today, starting with um, Kevin Smith from Planning and Building Services. He's going to talk to us about the rental housing registration process. Um, we kind of got this from public services, so bring us up to speed and let us know what we need to know, Kevin. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, this issue dates back several years to when the City Council adopted the original ordinance regarding the registration of all rental property, which is a good thing. We believe rental property should be registered within the city of Sioux Falls, primarily because if there ever is an issue there, whether it's uh, nuisance related or even in some cases uh, emergency related, that we know who the responsible party is. So we can get a hold of the property owner or the property manager if there's anything that is of, uh, I'd say, immediate concern. The way the ordinance was originally drafted was that every three years all of the rental registrations would or the permits would expire and the properties would have to be re-registered. Uh, we've gone through the cycle a couple of times uh, I would say with limited success on getting people to re-register the properties and because we've most in, most recently gone through this at the end of 2010 and into this year uh, one of the things we'd at least like to have discussed at the council level is whether or not it should be mandatory that we go through this every three years or whether it's just sufficient to require all rental property to be, re to be registered. And if there's ever a modification, whether the, the unit is, is expanded, let's say they go from two to three units or it's transferred or if there's a new uh, a new unit created. Someone buys what was previously an owner-occupied building, turns it into a rental unit. It needs to be registered. Um, it's something that, again, we do believe in. The question we have is whether or not we should go through this every three years just because um, or not. Kevin, are they all on the same cycle? They all registered basically in the same year, so every three years you're kind of even if you, let's say, converted a property eight months ago and registered it, they all register on that calendar, same three-year calendar date. So you'd have to re-register it along with everyone else. Um, the, the bigger issue is really getting people to understand that if you own rental property in Sioux Falls, it needs to be registered. And one of the reasons we <clears throat> ask to be in front of the the city council at this level is to just have that discussion that uh, we do think we're missing out on a lot of rental properties because either the owners don't know or don't care. And it is uh, a violation of city ordinance to not have rental property registered. Miss, yes, go ahead, Rex. Okay. What, um, what's the penalty for not registering? It would be, uh, as with any other citation, it begins with a $100 um, citation and, and onwards and upwards. In the past, we have been, I would say, accommodating in letting people know if there was something else on the property and we found out that it was a rental while we were out there, they would just be told, you need to register your property. So I would say we've been very um, flexible in our okay. use of whether or not a citation was issued. Kevin, Councilor is, Anderson. Is there a fee for registration? There is no fee for registration. And I understand uh, I wasn't part of the original discussion years ago when this was enacted by the City Council. I know there was a lot of discussion and maybe some concern from um, the rental property owner side of this that is the city really trying to uh, find a way to perform annual inspections on all rental properties in Sioux Falls, and that's not our intent. And frankly, we don't have the, the resources to even make that occur. I think we need to take care of the problem properties in Sioux Falls from a code enforcement standpoint uh, and not 
lump everybody into the same bucket. Yes, Councilor Anderson. So your question to us or suggestion is to make this a one-time registration and only you only have to re-register if there's a change in ownership or a change in size of the property or remodeling something like that or uh, that's essentially it and I, I also have Ron Bell here and Mike Cooper uh, and Ron has dealt with this I would say much more than I have in the past and he might be able to add some um, add some dialogue today as well but essentially yes it's, it's important to have it registered we need to have the information but should we have to go have the owners go through it every three years is go ahead it, it, do you see any purpose in having that done every three years I mean I right now I'm looking at that and not seeing anything what was the original purpose for every three years to make sure that they continued to register or I can't answer that counselor okay. uh, I wasn't here when that and when that I should say I was in a different department when that discussion took place and uh, that's where either Mike or Ron might be able to Ron uh, Ron something. had a comment he was getting up maybe he can well, help answer good, that get the verbal yeah. cues back there come on up Ron <laughs> Ron Bell of Building Services um, when this came into place in 2003 there was a three-year cycle based on a sunset they didn't know how well this was going to work or if it would work at all so they just made it for a three-year time period. okay so it was a council that in instigated the three-year deal seeing it was going to sunset it and then see if it was working and so then when it sunsetted, they had to do it again, and they just kept the three-year cycle going. And when 2007 came, there was no direction from the council, so we just went through the whole process again, and now 2010 came around. And we're talking about 3,000 applications mm -hmm. that we have to input for about, I don't know how many units, but it yeah. is a stack of paper this wide that we have to do this every three years. Yeah, makes no sense then. Yeah. Councilor Anderson. What percentage of... Uh, property owners that own rental properties do you think we have registered right now that's that's just a guess um, less than 50 50 percent 60 percent would just be a guess do you think there's a way to get more of them to do this well one of the things we are going to do it's just a question of how do we get this done is once we get all of the current ones inputted to match those against the uh, county records regarding property taxes so we can somehow sort out those that have submitted their permit applications or, or the permits themselves and those that we know are rental properties but didn't submit that and we're going to reach out to them personally um, but I, I guess for benefit of anyone who's listening watching or, or we'll read about this later um, we really just need this for compliance purposes that we really don't want to make it an enforcement issue but we will if we have to because this ordinance has been around long enough that uh, if you've owned rental property in the city of Sioux Falls for any period of time you should know about it uh, there's been information on channel 16 uh, we have done direct mails through utility bills there really should be no excuse people can give now that oh I didn't know and by having this not recur every three years it would possibly free up some time for someone to spend a little time in doing this too I, w I would hope we, you know by the methods we have now you can do this online you don't have to come in with a handwritten form that we've tried to make it as easy as possible for rental property owners to register mm -hmm. But like anything else, um, some just choose not to. The, the question is, what, what are we going to do from this point forward? And uh, it's getting harder and harder to be uh, flexible in saying, well, that's okay. We don't mind that you didn't register because we do. The, this ordinance is here. Whether it gets revised or not, I guess, is ultimately up to the city council. But uh, I, I would hope that, uh, for example, South Dakota Multi-Housing sees this as a benefit to them as well that we don't want to hold accountable uh, everyone because a few are, are holding out but we're, we're trying to help everyone here I don't know which of us were on the Board of Equalization one day last week where we came across a rental property that wasn't registered with the city and the the guy was just 
taken aback. This was new news to him, and I was kind of going, um, I think this is an old ordinance. Answer for me then, Kevin, what's the benefit to the rental owner to being registered? And then flip that around, what's the be benefit to the city for having them registered? Well, if there's ever any sort of issue um, that, rental prop that, that there is on a rental property and we need to contact someone, if I'm that rental owner, I want to know about it now as well. I don't want letters being sent off um, or phone calls not being made and days going by and things not getting uh, to the right individuals to make a change. If there is a problem and the owner and their agent are aware of it, I would hope that gives them even uh, a, a shorter time period to make the change. If there's a, let's say it's a weed complaint, for example, whereby you only get seven days to get the weeds mowed upon notification, well, don't you want to know so you can get that done and you're not in violation after those seven days and we have it done by contract? And for us, it's the same thing. Is we don't want to have to send out a contractor to mow the weeds. We want the owner to take care of it. The best way to do that is to have the most accurate information possible, and that's got to start with the owner. And I think uh, if it was about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, Kevin, didn't we have an issue? I want to say it was up in the cathedral area where we had a big problem trying to find a property owner on a home that we had some code enforcement issues on, and there was a, a representative that was claiming that that person was representing the owner. We never did, as far as I know, contact the owner. Uh, well, that was before my time, Counselor, but that wouldn't surprise Ron, me. do you remember the one I'm talking about? And I think we were actually dealing with two, two different individuals that were claiming to represent the owner, and we never were able to contact the owner that I knew of. So this would help alleviate some of those issues. And I would hope, ultimately, that if we have to appear in front of you again this fall um, for abatements, anyone who says, well... Um, the city shouldn't have mowed my lawn but, because I didn't get the letter. Um, I'm, I own the rental property, but I didn't get the letter. Well, was it registered? Did, did we have the correct contact information? Uh, that's where it starts. We'd like to avoid that as much exactly. as possible. That's what I remember from August is those people with, yep. you know, sidewalks not being shoveled and those kinds of things that well, we didn't know. Sorry. Other questions from the committee? I guess, do we have someone in the crowd maybe from the Multi-Housing Association or... Is there anyone that wants to that give input on this? Comment? Mm -hmm. Not yet? Question okay. then, Kevin. Um, Deborah did, uh, Deborah Owen, our clerk, did um, supply to us the draft of the ordinance as it sort of is now. Can you give us kind of a timeline on where it's headed and how soon you might want it to come before council? Well, I I'd leave that up to... The land use committee. I know Ron said there's one other thing we need. There's one other minor modification that needs to be made, but um, we're not at a point where this is something that's so urgent it needs to be on the next council agenda. But we just wanted to have some discussion with you, and um, as you see fit, to move it up to the the full council. Deborah, do you have comments for us on this? Thank you. I would wonder if you just want to have the final version uh, to approve in the next land use committee and then move it on from there if there's no rush. That sure. Give I think plenty that, of time for public input yeah. as well. That's fine. And if there are folks um, in the rental business, whether they're members of South Dakota Multi Housing or not, that would give them, I would say, ample time to contact you. Mm -hmm. uh, although I would be hard pressed to, to believe anyone from that side is going to say, no, we like having to go through the registration process every three years. Could happen, though. Okay, so we'll expect, go ahead, Councilor Ruffling. Um, I think that's, that's an excellent idea, although I would, I would encourage you to um, get this to us at least uh, two weeks ahead of time before our next council, our next land use meeting so that we have time to review it. Certainly. Please. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at it again as a committee on the fourth Monday of April and hope that the draft is pretty close. And if we've seen it, as Council Rolfing asked, if we've seen it, we can maybe shoot things to you that are, sure, oh, right. could you fix yeah, this we, or that? We are just here today to yep. let you know this is something that we'd been talking about internally for a while. And because it, it's not really on a certain timeline, like we have to have it done by May 1st, uh, we'd at least have some discussion. Good. 
Thank you. We mm -hmm. appreciate it. Next on our agenda is the transit routes. Mike Cooper is here, and I see Deborah Gajkowski has stepped in, too. That's awesome to have you here. Um, fill us in. Good afternoon. Mike Cooper, Planning and Building Services. When I was originally scheduled to talk to you tonight, uh, we had a public transit advisory board going on today at the same time, and now that's done so Deborah is able to join us this afternoon. I think the real purpose of, of today is just to come back to the City Council through the committee um, process and continue to have a discussion about our ongoing issues with route modifications. As most of the public is aware, there was a long extensive process involving staff and drivers and the public and others to look at different uh, recommendations for modifying various routes. Uh, that package of recommendations came before the City Council. Uh, some of those you did take action on and some of those you chose to, to defer uh, for further discussion. The, the key thing is Route 12, which is the infamous route in the southwest area of the city. Uh, Deborah Gajakowski has put together this fact sheet pertaining to Route 12. And then on the back is just another summary from last year of the cost of all the different fixed routes to give you, a, again, a comparison of the average rides per month, the average annual operating cost and, and cost per ride. Since we did put so much effort into these recommendations and research, um, didn't want to just drop the subject and wanted to maybe, again, have a dialogue with you as a council committee. What further actions can we take as staff to, uh, to analyze Route 12 or other routes that would be impacted by this? Uh, is there additional information that you think we should still be looking at, researching, kind of looking for some direction from you as we move into the future because we we still believe that there's a need to not only discuss Route 12, but that also has some impacts on other routes that uh, are still out there that, that could be improved um, by shortening the route time and making other changes that would be better for the ridership of those particular areas. So again, today was just a chance to continue to have discussion about about these route changes and maybe you've had a chance to think about it um, and if you have some other thoughts or direction from, for us that would be appreciated or other questions that you want us to, to further research. Questions from the committee? I forgot to bring all my stuff that I had. I had the whole <laughs> thing worked out or kind of worked out. Um, Did you get a copy of the fact sheet that I just handed yes, out today? Yes, I do, okay. right, right here. And um, maybe I should sit down and go through this with, go through my thoughts with you uh, in, individually. Sure. And I'd be happy to do that sometime. Because I did take time to look over all the routes and uh, there were a couple of things that I thought of that might be of help, might, might help. Um, and not so much Route 12, um, somewhat Route, route 12. <clears throat> it's one of those tough decisions. Yep. It's just one of those tough decisions that you don't know whether or not you're going to see something out there that needs to be done uh, if it's one of those that you stick with for another year or two and, and, and hope um, that it catches on uh, or you cut your losses right now and, and uh, look for it to build up out there before you add it back in. Because uh, you know eventually you're going to have to do it. Uh, with with what's going to going to happen out there uh, with the Sanford thing uh, going, you know, and that's probably five or ten years away, and uh, so you just you just don't know. We we are continuing to have discussions with property owners, the healthcare facilities, the the educational facilities out in that area. Again, to look at um, are your employees or are your students really interested in using the transit system that's available? Are there other options that we can talk about through a shuttle service to deal with patients or other users that, that need to have 
some type of transportation out in that area. So we are continuing to have those discussions with, with the people in that affected area. Mm -hmm. Other questions from the committee? Not a question, but I think we have to look at this, you know, when Route 12 is one of the first issues that's come up in this. As the city grows and expands, we have to try to uh, keep up with it with our transit f system. And right now, our transit f system is not capable of expanding to those outer areas of the city. This has been an issue that has been out there for quite a while, and I know that this is something that, that Mike and Deborah and the transit committees have been looking at for years. Um, <clears throat> I guess what I would like to see, Mike and Deborah, is that maybe next month at the, the next meeting you give some uh, suggestions on the direction we want to move with Route 12 to start with and then the other routes also. Because if you look at the whole transit uh, facility and routes within our city, this is the only route that goes past 57th Street. Mm -hmm at this time and we're they're just finding that right now it, it's just not a suitable route and there's been other areas where businesses and citizens have requested further transportation needs and we've shown that they are workable and doable in those areas it may come to the at the expense of route 12 at this time but I think there are other options in that area also, right at this time also. Mm -hmm. So I, I would hope that the, you know, next month you come up with some suggestions. You'll have time to speak with the committee members also individually uh, to, as Rex suggested, to uh, get everybody on the same boat on this one. Sure. I, I do support, I, and I, I may be the only one here, but I do support those changes. As presented, you, you support the as, changes that were as presented? As they were presented at mm -hmm. the last uh, okay. the council meeting, actually. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they've worked very hard, and, and they've studied these routes over the years. They work with the passengers. I, I think we really have to, you know, strongly consider the suggestions mm -hmm. that will come out of the, the PTAB committee and from Mike and Deborah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. A couple of questions from my ask, or at first a statement. You know, I spent a lot, and I appreciate Council Anderson saying how much work is involved. I totally get that. You know, I spent time just studying the work that you had done. It took me hours and hours to kind of mm -hmm. make it straight in my head. And, you know, Rex, you just, I had to get yeah. for a big, uh, a big map of the whole, the whole route system just to get an idea of where everything went yeah right exactly and and so I did spend a lot of time sort of sorting through that and it was based on on input from some citizens who are very concerned about this route going away and so and one of those citizens called me again today and and one of the things she's that I said to her was how come I'm only hearing from you why am I going to bat like this only for you I mean I see the big picture because I, I do work on that route. I could, I could ride that bus to work, but it doesn't get me there on time. It doesn't get me there in an easy fashion, you know, those kinds of things. And so I'm one of those folks that is kind of, you know, I'm maybe not the market, but could be because I live in that area, because I work in that area. My question then is, number one, do we need to be concerned about gas prices going through the ceiling? Will that affect ridership there and do we take that into account now when we're doing this particular study on these routes what do you think about that mike well i'll have deborah start to come up here because she's looked at this in the past but in the past we have tracked ridership and gas prices and i think in the past there has been a correlation to those two um, so yeah i mean i think as gas prices continue to increase that could drive ridership in some areas. But I think what we've discovered is that it's going to drive more ridership in the core area because of the, the income demographics mm -hmm. okay. as much as anything else. Um, but She's right behind there she Deborah, is. Do you want to add to okay. that, please? But yeah, that is something that we continue to look at and would look at in the future. But again, I don't know that that's the only factor, but it is one that we would certainly take a look at. Okay. 
Good afternoon, Deborah, the transit planner at the City of Sioux Falls. Um, we have seen a correlation in the past when gas prices have gone up. Um, our ridership has a tendency to go up as well. Um, I think Mike makes a very valid comment that it tends to be in the core area where um, the income may be at that level where, you know, that's where our transit riders are coming from. So, mm -hmm. um, but there is a correlation there. And I would also like to comment on Kenny's. Uh, he mentioned other areas of the community where service has been requested. Uh, today at our Public Transit Advisory Board, I started uh, something new. I'm going to start reporting on service requests every month. Uh, at one of our board members asked about it last month. So just within this last 30 days or so, we've had two requests for service to the Sanford Research Park. Uh, we do have service out there, um, but it's about a mile away from, just too far to walk from. And um, we also, on that particular route, we don't run quite as often. We run a couple times in the morning, midday, and then a couple times later in the day. So, I mean, it would be fantastic to provide that service more frequently and just expand it a little bit to reach some of these people. Um, we also heard from uh, another company out there, um, Lawrence and Schiller tell us something. They have some 100 to 150 employees. They, too, are asking for service out there. So just in the one month, we just had from that one area. So you really have to stop and think, um, is our money going in the right area as far as uh, are we serving the most number of people that we possibly could with um, the money that we have to work with? Well, and to add to that, if I could, Deborah, I was in an open house meeting on the Russell Street um, rebuilding, reconstruction process, and one of the conversations was the work release inmates from the former Elks building have to cross, you know, it will be six lanes of traffic to catch the bus that only goes in one direction on Russell Street. So I understand you've got some give and take in a lot of areas in town. So can you talk to us then about that? And, and this is my number one question for both of you, and I, I, I want to hear it in conversation. Let's talk about this a little bit more. That idea of putting our bus system on a grid system so that it's easier to navigate. I mean, I can't get off, I can't ride the bus to a certain point, get off, stand on the corner and wait for the next bus to pick me up. I have to go downtown or I have to go to Southwest. Can you talk about what's keeping us from looking at that and, and how might we move forward with that? Well, I think that when the transit system first started, you know, we just started uh, from a point and we just started providing services out. I don't think that we just really had the big picture at that time. And then as services continue to grow, demand continues to grow, well, then you just kind of come to the point where are we doing things the best way that they can be done. But for me to sit here and say that absolutely that's the way to go, I'm not going to do that. We really need to have a study done to look at that. Um, it obviously works in the bigger cities and the bigger communities because that's what they do in Chicago and that's what they do in a lot of these other larger metropolitan areas. Um, when you think about the, the operational aspect, it just seems to make sense, you know, that, that you would connect to more people um, in a broader sense. But um, I can't really tell you that absolutely that's the best way to go. Okay, so how do we study that? Uh, we put money in the budget. We could certainly put it in the budget for 2012 to uh, do a survey. There should be some funds through the Metropolitan Planning Organization to help us pay 80% of that. And then uh, they can tell us whether that's the best way to go. I'm getting some visual cues from some of my colleagues. I think that that would be a wise thing to do in the 2012 budget. I think we're at a point, um, you know, again, we have four council members er, that are still relatively new and we're looking at things a little differently. And we're hearing from people in different ways. And we're at a point, I think, where we want you to do that study. Okay. We want that to happen. I mean, I, I, I'm speaking again for myself, but I, I'm getting that feeling that we need to have that study happen. The other thing that's happening, and you know this real, full well, that as the community grows, we're going to need it more and more and more. And it's going to have to be better and better and better. And if we don't fix it now, we're going to be in trouble. And as to, to add on to that comment, as we grow, we have the challenge of, I believe it's when we hit 200,000, we lose federal funding. Right. Or some federal funding. We still so, have the federal funding, but we can't use it for operating any longer. We can only use it for capital purchases, so which is huge. I mean, that's, There'll be some major challenges mm -hmm. in the future in financing also. Right, exactly. So, you know, as long as this is a big question in all our minds at this point, let's go for it. Let's really study this some more. Okay. You know, and if we end up having to whatever with Route 12, 
okay. But I seriously, beyond the really one person that has called me and been the most concerned about Route 12, I've had a couple people say, thanks for digging in your heels, but thanks for the support, guys. I mean, I'm like, you know, so we need to, we're, we're at a point where we need to have this conversation. We need to have it more in depth than we have. Deborah, any, any idea what a uh, study like that would cost to look at the grid system? I would say anywhere between fifty and $75,000, right around there. Mm. Gee. And if we could get 80% paid for with federal funds, that would mm -hmm. help us out quite a bit. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the committee? Questions or comments from the audience? Mike, do you have anything else for us? Just uh, appreciate you. Uh, being willing to continue to talk about this. It's, it is an important issue. I still have all the newspaper clippings from all the city council debates that were held, and I think uh, pretty much every candidate said that there's an issue that we need to fix with transit. And so some of it is reality, some of it is perception, but it would be great before uh, uh, we get to the next council election that we can say that we've really taken a hard look at our public transportation system, and we've made some really good improvements. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Well, as a candidate, I was one of those people that said that, and I had <laughs> someone come up to me afterwards. She said, have a low-income person teach you to ride that bus system. You wouldn't have trouble with it after that. Yeah. And so I fully understand that I don't understand it. Yeah. But, but it is very important to the community. It is. So it absolutely want to do it the right way. Yeah. Let's Thank move you. forward. Good. All Thank right. you, Mike. Thanks. Anything else for the good of the committee? Very good. 